Uh, Ryan from Florida. I'm watching the 1992 Royal Rumble match as I write this. Good man. I can't help but think the WrestleMania 8 card was booked all wrong. In my opinion, it should have been Hulk Hogan challenging Ric Flair on top. You can probably keep Bret Hart against Roddy Piper for the IC title. Due to the natural disasters winning by countout at the Royal Rumble, you probably could have done the natural disasters challenging LOD for the tag team titles at WrestleMania, including introducing Paul Ellering during the match to counteract Jimmy Hart. Randy Savage against Jake the Snake Roberts I would do because I don't think that program ever came to a satisfying conclusion. Shawn Michaels versus Marty Jannetty. Due to Jannetty mysteriously jumping through the barbershop window to escape. Shawn Michaels, as uh, Bobby Heenan said. The only thing I'm not sure is what you would do with Sid Justice or The Undertaker. How would you have booked WrestleMania 8? And I know I've answered this question before, and I'm always happy to do so again. That is one of my favorite WrestleManias, even with the uh, the card not being what it could have been. Uh, Hogan versus Flair, why didn't it happen? I mean, that's a question that's been asked a gazillion times. You'll get a few different answers on that. Uh, on the one hand, you'll hear that they had a house show loop that didn't do so well. And so they figured this is not going to do good business and we're going to go in a different direction. Uh, if you ask Hogan or somebody else, Hogan's not going to admit to that. He'll give you a different answer. But yeah, Hulk Hogan against Ric Flair is absolutely the match that things seem to be building to. And that would have been a big match to headline WrestleMania. Uh, Randy Savage and Jake Roberts never did get that satisfying conclusion that they deserved. It's a very... Um, and people do praise the feud. I still feel it's severely underrated, though. It just sort of gets lost in the conversation because it only went on for a few months. And there was never, like I said, any big climactic finish to it. To me, the way to do it, especially if they had any insight into Jake wanting to leave. I'm not sure how late in the game they knew Jake was leaving the company. Uh, or how soon before the show he gave that notice to them. But if they knew then it would have made sense to do some sort of loser-leaves-town stipulation where Savage wins and Jake leaves. You know, this company's not big enough for the both of them kind of thing. So I would have done that match. Uh, Brett and Piper is fine. Uh, I think the natural disasters at that point, were they... Uh, they were still heels, weren't they? I'm a, Yeah, offhand, I'm a little confused about when they went babyface. I feel like it was somewhere around this period that they went babyface. Uh, but you know, they took the belts off LOD in February and at like a house show. And supposedly it was road warrior Hawk who said, you can't have any cameras rolling for it. I don't know what that was all about. I think it might've been a contractual, uh, disagreement. They left and they came back. That's why they only did a promo. <laughs> LOD did a, did a promo on stage at WrestleMania with Mean Gene. Um, you mentioned, what do you do then with Sid Justice and the Undertaker? I think you just answered your question. You do Sid Justice against The Undertaker. There you go. Um, I don't know if you... Maybe you don't turn Undertaker babyface the way they did the month before. Uh, or two months before, I guess. But, uh, you know, Sid and The Undertaker could have been a nice match all on its own. I don't know how good it would have been. But, you 